many times we have this idea that we just need to increase more protein to build our muscles because after all, muscles are made out of protein, right? But then when a lot of people do this, it doesn't always work. So in fact, there's actually a paradox involved here. Some people that eat more protein might even suffer from an individual amino acid deficiency. So whether you're trying to prevent muscle loss as you're getting older, that's called sarcopenia, or whether you're trying to increase more muscle, I want to talk about some other factors that are not related directly to protein consumption, even though you do need sufficient protein consumption to build muscles. But more than that, you need sufficient amount of amino acids. Now, when you look up the minimum amount of protein you need, there's a lot of conflicting information out there. But um, the general consensus is you need 0.8 grams per kilogram of lean body weight, not your overall weight. So let's say, for example, you weigh like 400 pounds and you have a lot of extra fat. It doesn't mean you should start massively increasing your protein. You should uh, calculate that based on your lean body mass. So 0.8 grams per kilogram of lean body mass is kind of like on the low end. That's like the minimum amount. And that on average could be around 50 uh, grams of protein per day. Now, when I say protein, I'm talking about the protein in your food. For example, if you take a steak and you have like 100 grams of steak, right, the weight of it, that only has roughly about 26 grams of protein in that 100 gram steak. So it's the protein in the food, not the actual weight of the food. Now, a moderate amount of protein could be between like 1.2 and 1.7 grams per kilogram of lean body weight. And then when we get into higher protein, that, that's roughly about like two grams uh, per kilogram of lean body weight. And a lot of weightlifters will do that amount and even a lot more. Too. So, but I'm not going to get into um, whether you should do that or not do that. I'm just kind of giving you some ideas on the ranges of how much protein you should have. But I want to really focus on these other factors that influence the production of muscle protein itself. You know, and a couple points I want to even touch on is your body doesn't normally store a lot of protein as like a reserve. Okay, so it doesn't store that. So if you eat too much protein, it'll just convert the excess into glucose. Bodybuilders sometimes like that because sometimes they want to increase insulin effects okay, from glucose because insulin is anabolic and they want to build their muscle mass. And if they're fortunate enough not to have insulin resistance and maybe they're immune to it or whatever versus the rest of us that have insulin resistance, that may work for them. But for the majority of the population, when they start increasing more sugar, glucose, or even glucose from protein, and thereby increasing more insulin, the body tends to now create insulin resistance. So it's kind of a catch-22. Here you're trying to increase more insulin, but the more you try to do it, the more you're creating insulin resistance to the point where now you have a deficiency of insulin. Okay, that's what insulin resistance is. So how does that affect your muscles? Well, guess what? You need insulin to absorb amino acids. So the more insulin resistance you have, the less ability you're going to be able to use these proteins for your own muscles. So that's barrier number one, insulin resistance. How is that created? By eating too many carbs. And it could be also created by consuming too much protein too. So on the flip side, if we want to correct insulin resistance, we want to get on a low carb diet. We want to not eat as frequently. And this is the other point I want to bring up about protein. So many people have this idea that they have to be constantly eating protein when they're working out before or after or even during. So they're having these protein powders and, and these shakes and these uh, bars. But in fact, that's going to actually rebound on the person many times because it's going to act as a snack. It's going to increase insulin, but create more insulin resistance. And it's really not needed uh, for many reasons, but definitely insulin resistance is one reason. The other factor involved with building muscles is growth hormone. Um, and there are some things that you want to know about growth hormone. How do you first trigger growth hormone? Well, you can trigger it by intense exercise. So if you're trying to build muscle with just eating protein and not exercising, it's not going to work. Exercise is the most potent activator of muscle uh, synthesis, especially intense exercise, as well as the volume of exercise too. So it's not just doing a short little intense workout. It's, it's really increasing the volume and the load on the muscles 
doing like resistance type uh, exercise. But exercise will stimulate growth hormone, okay? And it also stimulates testosterone too, both necessary for building muscle. Now, uh, another thing that you can do to increase growth hormone is fasting, right? Fasting and not snacking so frequently. So fasting can increase growth hormone. And um, if you're trying to build muscle, I would just do intermittent fasting, okay? Intermittent fasting, not eat so frequently. Eat two meals a day. I think that would be a lot better than three meals a day. Now, with intermittent fasting, your hunger will go down. So you just want to make sure that you have enough calories too, because uh, especially if you have a fast metabolism, growth hormone also can be inhibited by um, high blood glucose levels. So that's why I like the low carb, I like intermittent fasting, and a good exercise uh, plan, as well as a good amount of recovery from sleep. All of those factors can help increase growth hormone. Now, as far as testosterone goes, there's several things you need to be aware of. Zinc deficiency can create uh, a low testosterone. So zinc can definitely increase your testosterone. Now, where do you get zinc from? Red meat, shellfish, seafood, way more than plant-type foods. How do you create a zinc deficiency? By eating too many refined carbs, too much sugar, going through stress. The other thing that can inhibit testosterone is having too much estrogen, okay? Now, where does that come from? Well, it mainly comes from like a lot of the soy protein isolate foods. Uh, soy milk can do it. You also increase estrogen when you drink beer, okay? Yeah, and also consume alcohol. Now, another way to create a, a problem with amino acids is to consume foods low in certain amino acids, like plant-based proteins, whether you're a vegetarian or a vegan or consuming a lot of plant-based protein, which are considered clean proteins, uh, many times are low in certain amino acids. And one amino acid that I want to bring up is leucine. Leucine is a, a potent stimulus of the production of muscle. So mostly you're going to see low leucine foods in plant-based uh, foods. But you're not going to see this in animal meats, things like that. So it's the type of protein that's important too. Eggs, meat, fish, dairy, all very, very important. Now, another factor is stress. Stress produces cortisol. Cortisol is very catabolic. That's the opposite of anabolic. So it tends to break things down. If you're under chronic stress, um, that can wear your muscles down big time. Primarily, it starts out in the thigh muscle, the quadricep, and then it goes after the gluteus maximus, and it can convert some of that, um, that protein into sugar, which then is converted to fat around your midsection, okay? So that's just another factor to be aware of. Another factor is the microbiome. The microbiome is in definitely involved in helping you make amino acids and other factors in helping you make uh, protein in general. And so if someone had a lot of antibiotics, many times they start having all sorts of problems with their muscles, uh, building muscles and uh, maintaining uh, muscles. So Consuming more probiotic foods, like fermented foods, like sauerkraut, things like that, that are very, very good. Now, the other thing that I, I've run into with people is that they just don't have enough stomach acid to break down the protein that then turn into muscle. So you, they never have this uh, fully broke down protein product into the amino acids. So hydrochloric acid is very, very important, especially as we age. The stomach acid goes down. So you need to start to support that so you get the full breakdown of amino acids. So betaine hydrochloride is a really good thing to start taking with your meals to enhance the amino acids into the muscle. How do you know if you have a problem or deficiency of hydrochloric acid? Well, one way is indigestion or acid reflux or GERD. If you have that, you should watch the link down below. Now also um, enzymes, enzymes mainly from the pancreas and even from the small intestine can be a factor. If you don't have enough enzymes, uh, you're not going to be able to break down certain foods that then can turn into these pure amino acids. So a couple things with the pancreas, you could have a like bile sludge that can build up that can create pancreatitis. So that's a problem with the bile. And the way that you probably have that is you get a lot of bloating or you have referred pain to your left or right shoulder. Uh, I put a link down below if you have that. Or you have some type of malabsorption in your small intestine or your large intestine where there's inflammation or past gut problems. 
that have been really hindering your ability to absorb uh, protein, in which case you might need to take an amino acid supplement. And then the other factor I want to bring up is when you eat protein, right? You have to realize that the ideal protein for your body to absorb um, would be in its natural form with fat versus lean protein, okay? The leaner a protein is, the harder it is to digest and the more problems it can create. There's some interesting data on that in relationship to people eating just, you know, very, very lean protein and no fat and what that does to your bodies. There's a, there's a lot of problems with that. So I recommend um, always consume the fat that normally comes with that protein if possible. Or if you're eating chicken, have the skin on it. Or fish, try to have the skin on it. That's much better. And this also includes, like, so many people are doing this refined protein by having protein powders all the time. I mean, a little bit of that is okay, but if you're just relying exclusively on protein powders, it's not the ideal scene to build healthy muscles, especially since they put all this maltodextrin and this corn syrup in there and all sorts of crap. But in this video, I just wanted to go beyond this dietary protein and give you some other factors, especially if you're trying to build muscle or prevent the loss of muscle as you age. Now, since I brought up growth hormone, uh, it's a really important topic, and if you haven't seen my video on growth hormone, you should probably check that out. Uh, I put it up right here.